Hello, everyone. We're in the dressing room at the Flato Markham Theater right now, getting ready for our show. It's actually Markham Flato Theater, but okay. Anyways, my name is Will. And I'm Matt. Yeah, we're Will and Matt. And one of the first things we wanted to talk about with you guys today is the importance of including comedy in your shows. Obviously, it doesn't have to be the whole show, but we do think it is an important element because, well, people come to events to escape reality and have a good time. And the best way to know if someone's having a good time is if they're smiling and laughing. Right. Uh, but let's say if you're doing, obviously, it depends on what you do, right? If you're a dancer, I guess it's a bit hard uh, to include comedy in your act. But if you do something that involves a lot of talking, obviously, it's good to throw in a joke or two to change the flow of your routine and also to engage the audience. Remember to communicate. That's also very important. And that's the importance of having different acts in a show, too. Obviously, not everything is going to be making everyone laugh all the time. Obviously. But it's a, something you should touch on within a, whole, a show as a whole. Unless you're a comedian. That's a different story. <laughs> your whole ad, your whole purpose of existence is to make people laugh. Right. Um, I was uh, also like performing at the Mark of Plato Theater. It's our first time performing here. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's a very nice theater. Uh, reminds me of the Isabel Bader Theater, which is located in downtown Toronto. It's very similar, actually. Yeah, the seating is very similar. Uh, we did a huge show there once, and uh, just the seat, the seating layout is very similar. It gives you enough room to walk off stage and sort of in, walk into the audience and uh, uh, pick volunteers. Because in Magic, like we have to pick volunteers a lot, and uh, it just makes it really easy for us to do that. And also. When they turn on the house light, it's really beautiful in a sense that uh, the, the the seating, it just looks very well organized. Unlike some of the theaters we, we go to, like it, it feels really packed like the, because the seat isn't big enough. They try to squeeze in as many people in there as possible and just um, it's really hard. It's, it's very disgusting. But unlike this one, it looks pretty good. Yeah, there's a lot of space for the people. It's still because it is full, it looks full, but it, when you're sitting there, you also don't feel uncomfortable as well. There's a lot of space for the people, which is nice as well. Yeah. Comfortable seating. And uh, we're actually here for the Chinese New Year, which is a Chinese tradition that we celebrate with a variety show, usually. It's, 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 we've been invited to a lot of those in, in, in nowadays uh, because, uh, because, you know, we're famous. We're making it. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, uh, yes, yeah, it's part of the Chinese tradition to celebrate with a gala type event, uh, featuring a lot of different types of variety acts. There's a uh, circus act. There's uh, singing. There's Chinese opera. There's uh, Chinese drama, and there's also magic. Who would have thought? Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Last but not least. Uh, we've received a lot of requests to ask us to teach our uh, fans and subscribers some stuff. So today we're going to actually teach you something that's very uh, useful and cool and something that you can impress your friends with. This is known as the card spring. Okay, It's what's called a flourish. A flourish is something that's not a magic trick per se, but it's something that you can use to show that you are skilled with cards. Okay, So what you do is you hold on to the deck like this. Uh, with your the second joint of your uh, ring finger, middle finger, and your index finger. And the way I do it uh, is to hold on to the other corner diagonally with your thumb. And you sort of are applying pressure diagonally on both of these two uh, ends over here. Uh, and you just let the cards shoot out one by one, like this. Uh, you can start off uh, with a very small gap between the, your two hands and as you become more skilled with it you can increase the distance like this okay uh, and if you're really uh, confident if you, if you feel like a superstar you can even increase a little bit of a movement while you're doing that so that's the classic flourish called card spring hopefully you can master that very soon and you can probably uh, imp improve your friends uh, in no time and also, when you do the motion, when you do the motion with the spring, when you do that extra distance, it also makes it look like it's going a lot further too. Hopefully, you guys can get that in. Oh boy! You're like... I do it slightly different. 
we, I still do the corners, but I just apply the middle finger and the ring finger there and my thumb at the other corner. So gently let them drift off just like that. Apply some pressure. You're going to start off very slow for a while. You're probably going to be dropping a lot of cards. So start off by keeping it close, then over time. Oh, so he just uses two fingers. Yeah. I just use those two fingers there. But you can play around with it, whichever one suits you the best. It's always good to have options to start learning, see what suits you better. That's right. Whichever one works, go with that one. So yeah, hopefully that helps you. And uh, uh, let us know if you have any questions when you practice the card strength. Hopefully uh, this video helps you in terms of learning stuff. And uh, see you guys next time. Remember to leave comments, likes, and... Also, tell us how your card spring progresses. Tell us how it's going in the comments as well. I was going to say, don't forget to subscribe as well. But yeah, leave the comment as well. All right, peace out!